guitarist and the uh, frontman. Excellent. You won the Metal to the Masses in Birmingham? That's right, yeah. That's right. Um, so, what kind, of, what kind of music are you, you guys playing? What are you, what are you going to be throwing at the crowd today? It's a lot of uh, extreme metal, but obviously with old school influences, you know. Yeah. We still class ourselves mostly as a rock and roll band, but it's just that our natural expression is of an extreme nature, if that makes sense. In a festival like this, it, <laughs> yes. make, it wouldn't make sense if you weren't here. Um, right. what, was, what was the competition like in Birmingham? Because it is, all the regions, the competition is so intense. Um, how did you feel going through? Did you ever at any point think, we've got this, or were you literally on the edge of your seat to the, the very end? Uh, we just went into it expecting nothing, you know, we just wanted to play some more shows because really we had nothing to lose, you know, we were already doing a fair amount of shows around the country and we thought let's try and get some hometown ones and we were slightly apprehensive about playing the same city like so close to it, like, you know, yeah. within like space of a few months but it was a great decision looking back at it now, you know, we just went in. All three of the shows turned out perfect, and after each set, we were happy enough to have left yeah. afterwards, but it just went really great, you know, and yeah. we ended up actually going through and uh, playing Bloodstock, which is fantastic for us. Yeah, so you guys playing later on today? We are playing uh, later on uh, at a quarter to seven. So quite on, yeah. And then just as we finish, I believe, Emperor go on main stage. Ooh. So I think it's a nice treat for the fans of this genre. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Uh, Emperor will be quite good. You're going to get a chance to catch most of them after you, you tidy up? As quick yeah, as we're you just going to leg it to the back and then <laughs> come back. Good move. Yeah, they're going to be fantastic tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are they your, your band at the festival? Is there anybody else in particular uh, you're looking forward to? Priest, I think, is the one I'm looking forward to the most. And obviously, what Um Yeah, of course. They are, they're after Priest, aren't they? On the, on, what on the, Sorry, Sunday, Sunday. Like, they're like the very last band to finish the yeah, whole festival off, so uh, yeah. we just, yeah, there's no way we can get prepared for that, but we're trying to <laughs> get ready for it, you know. So I think the only way to prepare for that one is to get there early and get down the front. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Have you been to Bloodstock at all before yourself? Uh, yes, uh, I attended 2012 and 13 yep. before, and the uh, 2012 one uh, mm -hmm. was actually one of my first sh uh, live show experiences in the UK because I moved here from Iran yep. in 2011. And uh, that was obviously we didn't we don't have shows over there, you know. Yeah. Uh, you're not allowed to exercise this type of heavy metal culture or anything. Yeah. And, uh, which is the reason why I came over. But yeah, uh, yeah plus, plus 2012 was my first experience here, and mm -hmm. 13 was great as well. And uh, unfortunately, I hadn't had the chance to come back the past five years. But yeah. it's great that we're now coming back and actually playing. Yeah. You know, I think uh, that's a that's a great thing for us. I haven't had a, a bit of a walk around and an experience over yesterday. How, how does it compare to five years ago? I'm, I'm just curious. I've, I've seen it year on year and you don't notice a small change. Interesting so. question. I, more or less, I would say it's the same. Um, I, f I feel like, I don't know, I, I'm seeing a lot more extreme metal merchandise yep. than I did back then. But even then it was the same. It's more or less the same, I would say. Just the great atmosphere of like metalheads and people who like this kind of music and understand it and just want to share it with each other, you know. Yeah. I mean, you talk about coming up from Iran. Did you play in a band in Iran? Is, is it possible well, to do that, just not get gigs? Yeah, yeah, kind of. I formed the band in the 2009 uh, on my own, and then within a year of that, I actually found a drummer and a bass player. But it was just really like obscure circumstances. You know, we had to play in a basement that we had covered with like egg cases. You know, so to, like very DIY acoustic. But we still got, you know, like threatened by the neighbors that they would call the police and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of my friends are still over there, and they aren't able to come here and share this with everyone. The main thing for it uh, is that I was lucky enough to come here and uh, I can not only come and enjoy the bands that I like, but I can also share my music with people, uh, with like-minded people here, which to me is is the best thing, you know, I, I can't ask for anything better. So uh, in a country like Iran where you can't obviously perform this kind of music, um, how, did you, how did you get into metal in the first place? Is it an underground thing? Is it easy to get hold of the music? Is it? Uh... It's easier now than it yeah. was for sure compared to when I first got into it, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, back then it was like we only had dial-up internet that was like three kilobytes per second, you know, and I <laughs> yeah. used to stay up like day and night to actually download albums. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that was that was sort of the way to get the music, you know, obviously other than just like, you know, trading and uh, stuff like that. Uh, but for me, the, I think the moment that did it was just very accidentally coming across a Metallica music video while the volume was off. I just, there was something, I think when I saw James Hetfield, I was like, that's it, you know. Yeah. And I was I was about 14 at the time, and 
I haven't really looked back since that. So yeah, yeah. You had the chance of living the dream now. Pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, all, all I want, you know, all we want is the freedom to express this music. You know, freedom is is the most important thing to us. Uh, of away from the world and all of its crap. Yeah. You know, and yes, we have that at the moment, I suppose. So. Yeah. So what's coming next for Trivax? You've got your show coming up now. Have you got any plans for the rest of this year into next year? Any, yeah, any sure. new music shows? Or? Yes. Uh, well, we released our album Sin in 2016. Yeah. And uh, this September and November we are going to do some local tour uh, mm -hmm. in order to give that one final push. Yeah. And uh, once all of the live shows are finished this year, uh, we are going to head to the studio and uh, just work on our next record. Yeah. Any plans for, are you, are you setting yourself a deadline or are you just going to see how it goes and release it when it's ready? We can, you know, like with Trivex, I think it's impossible to plan ahead, you know. <laughs> we just like, you know, leave ourselves to chaos and then see where it takes us. But hopefully, to answer your question, <laughs> mid, mid to 2019, we should hopefully have the next album. Just something to look forward to. That's yes. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, Likewise, looking sir. Looking forward to catching you guys later on. Cheers. Um, enjoy the rest of the festival and the, the, this lovely British weather. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Likewise, sir. Cheers. Thank you very much for having us. Oh, you're very, very welcome.